Welcome to the Falco Solutions video on breaking external references. In this video, I'm going to cover what is an external reference and ways that they're created, why typically external references are avoided, and then how do you break external references specifically with the new tools that are in Creo 4 and Creo 5. Let's start off with what is an external reference. An external reference is when an individual part or a component has some type of reference outside of itself. There are different types of external references, but what we're going to focus on is the geometry to geometry type external reference. The ways that they are created is that I might be working on a part in an assembly or activating a part on an assembly, and then I create an extrude until it to go up to a plane or up to a surface that exists outside of that part. The part is created in the assembly itself. And then again, like we talked about before, I might reference a uh, sketcher to a datum plane or sketcher to another part. The third one here is pretty much the same as the other two, where I redefine a part or redefine a specific feature in a part, and then I use some type of object external to that part. And then the last one goes along with PTC's top-down design methods, but creating copy geometry, whether it's part of the skeleton or not, you still create that external references. These are the types of references that we will focus on. I can't tell you the number of different times that we've walked into customers and they talk about how they avoid external references at all costs. And there's a number of different reasons why they do it. Unintended feature changes. If I have an external reference to part A and I change part A, what happens to part B? If I'm unaware of the external reference and I don't know exactly what is or is not going to change in part B, I might have unintended changes. I might get out of date components because the parent component of component B doesn't exist or it's not in session. From a wind chill standpoint, if I have part B and I created an external reference to a top level assembly, now when I bring out part B, the entire top level assembly must come along with it in all of its components. Can you imagine that if there were 10,000 parts in that assembly? Regeneration times. Creating assembly cuts. And when I say assembly cuts, it's not even showing the actual geometry on the parts. But because I've created a bunch of assembly cuts in my assembly, that just the calculation of the intersection components cause all of that regeneration time to build up. We had a specific company that reduced its regeneration time by 75% just by getting rid of assembly cuts. Okay, how do we break external references? Typically, what we would do is you'd create an external reference, you'd then go to the part, edit the definition of that feature, and then at that point in time, get rid of the external reference and then re-reference it. That's typically how I've seen it's done. But what you will find now in Creo 4 and Creo 5, PTC has put in specific tools to help you not only control your external references, but permanently break them without going through edit definition. It is a two-step process. It is backup references. You'll see that by right-clicking on a feature itself, seeing references, and then saying backup. And then once you back up those references, we'll talk about what backup is, then you have the ability to decide how you want that external reference to be handled whether it's through auto, which is by default, which is update on regen. We'll talk about the manual update with notifications, manual update itself, and then the ability to permanently break that external reference with what we call no dependency. I'll also get into a few of the other options that you see down here where you see show differences. That's kind of interesting to see. Now, these tools, backup references and update control, only work for geometry to geometry references and the copy geometry idea. That's it. They do not break the generic to instance and family tables, the merge idea, external simplified reps. Though these tools do not work for those external references, just for geometry, geometry, and copy geometry. Okay, let's look at how these tools actually work in Creo. So what we have here is a simple assembly with two parts, part A and part B. In part B, all I did was created a hole, and when I created that hole, I based the reference or placement of that hole off of the axis 
or the whole from part A. How do we discover whether our part does or does not have an external reference? Using the reference viewer allows me to see whether that part does or does not. And whether you're using Windchill or not, you can use the reference viewer. So I'm going to pick part B, go to information, reference viewer, and what you'll see is that the parent of part B is part A. Very simple way to see an external reference. Or if I come in and pick the whole itself and say information, reference viewer, you will see that it actually tells me what the whole in part A is that reference. Now, when you are not using Windchill, this is a very simple way to see your external references. You can also use the reference viewer when you are using Windchill, but there's also other ways to see whether you do or do not have external references when you're using Windchill. Let's go to the information page of part B. What I want you to notice in part B's information page under the related objects tab is that where you see references, there is a reference type called relation reference. Now I'm going to show you here in just a just a little bit what is a relation reference. The other way you can tell that you have external references in Windchill is that if I go to add part B to the workspace and if I immediately go to the advanced tab under dependence if I change it to all it is going to collect all of the references that are needed specifically in the idea of geometry to geometry references of part B. So it went and collected the, ex the assembly, that external reference that, I, that we were looking at, and also part A because that's where I get my reference from. Some of you might want to know the difference between what is all and required. In this article that you see right here from PTC, and I'll put this down in the description, it actually tells me exactly what is required, all, or none. Now what we're concerned about is the all requirement. And if you notice, like we've talked about before, you will see relation reference, where a relationship be created between two objects in the assembly, or more specifically, I created a whole that has a reference, a geometry reference, to part A through the assembly. I'm going to put this link down in the description so you can read through these. Again, what we're covering more in this video is the all type reference. So in the grand scheme of things, if you specifically have or want to create external references as part of your design process, making sure that you have at least the setting of all when you do add to workspaces, you will get the components that you need for making sure that your components are updated at all times and they get brought down out of Windchill into your workspace. Now that we've talked about what external references are and how do you identify them, let's go ahead and go through the breaking process. Okay, back at the assembly. Now, what we're going to do here is I'm going to break this whole external reference from this one. And like I said before, it is a two-step process. So what I'm going to do is right click on the hole and you'll see references. I'm going to select backup references. Now, if I expand that hole, what you're going to see is a geometry backup. What this does, it actually takes the axis from hole one and copies it into part B. Once I use the backup function, what you will see now is update control. And by default, it is on automatic update. What does automatic update do? If I go change hole in part A, let's go ahead and check out that part, change it from 7, let's say to 3, do a control G, see how part B updated right along with it. That is because it is in automatic update. Typically, that's what we want. But let's change it to manual update with notification. This time, when I select it, it's going to say, hey, part B needs to be checked out. Check out part B. Now, when I go change the hole, 3, back to 7. When I hit Control-G or Regenerate, you get a notification out of the Notification Center. 
And at that point in time, if I right click on it, I can go into update control and immediately say update, but let's look at the other options. I'm going to go to show differences. What you'll see here is that I have the outdated axis, which is right here. See how it's outdated? And then now where the new changed axis is. So it's telling me what the reference was to where now the reference is. And whether I right click and do update or hit update here, it doesn't matter. You'll see now that the hole has update right along with it. So if I wanted to manually control when my objects do or do not update, I can do that with manual with notification. And the only difference between manual and manual with notification is that you don't get the notification. All right, let's break the external references. Everybody came here to see break external references. If I go ahead and hit no dependency, this is a permanent function. Once you break this, you cannot reestablish that connection. So if I hit OK, there it is. Very simply, I have broke my external reference. That's it. Nothing more, nothing special, no magic button. All I do is backup references and hit no dependency. Now, how can we prove that we don't have the dependency? Let's go look at the information page again. Here's my part. Information, reference viewer. See how we don't have the parent. And if, from a windshield standpoint, because I know some of you will be very interested in that, let's go ahead and check in all of our parts. Let's go check in. Check in that guy. Check that one out also. Now, if I go to my information page of part B, Let's refresh that page. Not only will you see that there is not the relation reference that we saw before, but also if I go to my Add to Workspace, same thing, Advanced tab, change it to All, you will not see the other parts come along with it. That's it. That's how you break external references in Creo 4 and Creo 5 permanently. You don't have to go through the long process of edit definition, repicking a reference, having the numerical values from a dimensional standpoint mess up. All I have to do is say backup, and at that point in time, right click, no dependency. That's it. Very simple. As always, reach out if you have any questions. Good luck.